Mr. Shamalan. How are you? I'm good. Okay. Um, well, we met uh, six years ago for Split, mm. this kind of interview. And um, this is my idea. I'm going to ask you the very same questions. Oh, wow. Six years is a lot of time, yes. and you made two movies and a, and a TV series in between. So let's see if we get some surprising twist. Okay, from fantastic. Your answers. Okay. Very interesting. Life is unpredictable, as well as your movies are. Um, please tell me one surprising twist uh, that happened in your life. In my life, huh? Yes. Oh, wow. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know if this is going to answer your question, but this is what came to mind, was I'm, I'm always astonished about how things manifest that, you know, I, 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 I see something and then there it is, you know, it, it happens. And um, I like I, I saw a college near my house where I used to go visit some friends and I was like, there's something important about this college. Then my wife ends up going to that college and my daughter now is making movies. And now I see her and I, I'm seeing myself in her at every stage, at every age. And I'm, I'm just kind of watching everything unfold in this way, almost like I do when I make a movie. Like I write thing and then we, I get to see these characters do it and then it comes and becomes real on screen. That's, that seemed, that feeling happens to me in real life a lot, which is strange. Like I, I imagine this and then eight years later, 10 years later, 20 years later, it actually happens. Unbelievable. Let's hear your younger self. I'm not a religious guy, but I kind of see something in there, like how this all works out and all, how, the, how much we, the things we think of affect, affect the universe and the universe comes back, like how that relationship is. Um, so I continually see, see these weird connections and things. I mean, again, you, you could argue away everything I would tell you as, oh, that's a coincidence or that's not you know, real, it's in your mind. But I, I have a lot of situations like that where I, I can't believe that happened. That's amazing, <laughs> pretty yeah. close, right? Pretty close. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, how much do you like Alfred Hitchcock's movies? I have a collection of movies at my house on the shelf. There's like 800 of them. And they're not all the greatest movies, but as many as I can collect, right? I have 800 of them. And one day I went and I said, who has the most movies on my shelf? I just wanted to see which filmmaker had the most movies. So I counted who had the most. And it was Alfred Hitchcock and he has 14 of the 800 on my shelf. So I, you know, organically and I don't put everyone everybody's movies on there just the ones that mm -hmm. speak to me and sure. so obviously 14 times he has spoken to me in a way that I felt was exceptional never could be duplicated that one person's point of view was incredibly strong so um, uh, he he means everything to me because he has sure. that sense of humor and that kind of I, I really understand the way he thinks about the frame is what you said six years ago. I mean, you come if you come to my house. There's only there's a few movie posters up, old old vintage movie posters. But there's a set of Alfred Hitchcock posters that are up. All of his original posters are in my house really? of all my favorite Hitchcock posters. So that's really the the church. Whoa, close again. Yep, the last one. Um, well, you uh, when people go to see your movies and they are not going to watch a random thriller. It's a Shyamalan's thriller. So you, you did this to yourself. <laughs> uh, you, um, you have to deal with audience expectations. Mm -hmm. So how do you manage that? Just being honest uh, uh, about who I am, you know, not trying to be smarter than who I am and being very, you know, cl clear about the things that I'm interested in and, and not trying to lecture nor trying to be liked more than by liked, I'm, you know, uh, entertaining to the point of I'm, you know, like the person that tells too many jokes at the dinner table or something. Okay. Don't, don't try too hard, you know. So just that balance of who you are and that balance of who I am is I do like to, to, to get a shock out of you. I do get mischiev mischievous about that. I do like talking about important things. I am an emotional guy. Um, I do love cinema. So everything about cinema is incredibly important to me, the frame, the lighting and everything. So those that being that honest to 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 the audience and they can see me then whatever their response to seeing me is the correct one okay well it's a bit different but the essence is all there 
<laughs> when you say expectations, it means that comes with a relationship. Like we have a relationship, the audience and I, right? And so it's a real one, it's a, it's a connection. And like all relationships, there, there comes expectations, you know? Oh, we had such a great date. I hope, I can't wait to go on a date with him again. I hope he's the same way. It's like you have an expectation of what the, what the next date will be like. That's all good. And then you said something which, is, which was really interesting. You said it was my fault. And that's, a, that's, a, that's really important and really positive. Whoa. Thank you very much, sir. That was weird. That was wild. Yeah. It was messy with my brain because I started to think, like, what, would, what did I say? <laughs> Maybe this is the, 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 the beginning of your new idea. Who knows? This is so good. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. It was sir. a pleasure. That was really fun. <laughs>